Let's talk about some components of the Civil 3D environment. To begin with, up top we have our ribbon. The ribbon has different tabs. The tabs each have uh, different groups of commands. The home tab contains a general set of commands for different uses, working with points, uh, drawing figures, modification commands, working with layers. The insert tab covers working with points uh, from the aspect of importing points from a file. The annotate tab contains a lot of our label creation and uh, adding dimensions, dimensional labels. And the output tab is where we would uh, export points into a file. The rest of the tabs are self-explanatory, but go through each one of them to see uh, which data is contained there, what type of commands are there. But today, those are the four that we're gonna talk about. In our environment, we also have the command line down here at the bottom. That's where you enter your commands by typing the name of the command. Each command typically is also represented somewhere in the environment by an icon, a clickable icon. Some of the icons have flyouts that you can use. So this is, for instance, creating a line, but all the different types of lines that you can create are contained in the flyout. However, when you know the command uh, name, you can generally type it down here in the command line. Most of the commands are the word for the command that you want to do. For instance, uh, to move an item, you type in the word move. To copy an item, you can type in the word copy, etc. There are shortcuts that you can use for each of these, but if you forget the shortcut, you can always type in the entire word, and that works much the same. And when you don't know what the word is, you can always come and look for the icon, but if you know which icon you're looking for, you know which word you're trying to do as an action, you can type that into the command line. Above your command line is your list. As you can see, your list contains a record um, of each of the actions that you have performed. It goes on relatively infinitely. I can move my cursor over it and scroll and look through the list of activities that I've done. I like to extend my list. You can drag it to show more or less data to show at least four lines of history. This is really useful when you're doing inquiries and AutoCAD is repeating information back to you. It'll use the list to give you that information. And if you have a few lines visible, you'll be able to see everything that's included there. So your command line, your list, the ribbon. I'd also like to talk about a paper space versus model space. Or you may have heard uh, your model tab and your layout tab. Uh, when I say layout tab, I'm gonna go into um, another drawing that's been created without the use of a template talk about templates in a different training. But you can see that this is generically called or named by AutoCAD Layout 1. So some people will think of this as their layout. The reason that we're using the terms of model space and paper space, when you think of the two tabs, your layout tab or your paper space is where the sheet of paper that you're going to print as a template lives. Um, this sheet of paper is sized according to the actual sheet. This one is an 11 by 17, for instance. So when I print it out, it will print out onto an 11 by 17 um, at one to one. That's what's going on. So this is my actual sheet of paper. It's the size of a sheet of paper. Um, and I am looking through paper space down here into my model space environment, um, which is a one to one representation of the world looking through it uh, at a window, and then that window I set a, a specific scale at which I want to see things so that it fits best, so that it fits best on the sheet in a way that the information there is legible, large enough to see and understand it. And I can uh, double click to go back and forth between model space and paper space. When I'm on the paper space tab, and then in model space, of course, uh, I'm just floating around in model space itself. You'll notice that I have to the left of my working environment, uh, the tool space. And the tool space has a, a few different tabs as well. The prospector where data sets or objects are grouped together and the prospector uh, helps control the way uh, those groups function. It's most often used when we're working with point groups, modifying the ways that they're grouped, uh, the visibility of the group, or to export points contained in a specific point group. Um, 
as seen here. We've got the Settings tab. The Settings tab controls the overall settings for the drawings. It controls the way individual objects or tasks will function, so long as they're not overridden by settings for the groups as determined in the prospector. This tab is going to be used most commonly as we determine individual settings for the way our points appear as far as their markers, as far as the label for the point. Everything else more or less explains itself. There's other settings controlling the way those uh, individual objects or items are displayed or behave in the Civil 3D environment. Let's talk about selecting objects. You select objects by left clicking primarily. You can do a single left click on an object to select it. I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to get out of any command. You'll notice down here that when I hit escape it says cancel. When I left click select an object, um, it becomes highlighted or selected by glowing. And if I escape, it's deselected. I have two different selection methods. One is created by dragging the cursor to the left. Notice that when I drag to the left, I get a green box with a dashed line. If I drag to the right, I get a blue box with a solid line. When I do a uh, select to the right, for instance, the solid line tells me that what I'm selecting needs to be completely encompassed by my selection box to be selected. So in other words, if I uh, didn't quite capture this entire piece of text in my selection box, it wouldn't become selected. If it fell completely within the box, it allows itself to become selected. With a drag box to the left and this dash line, a component only needs to fall partially within the box to be selected. So anything that falls within the box in any way becomes selected. I can hit escape to deselect. If I were to do that box to the right and it was solid, it wouldn't be selected. So that left select is typically a great tool for grabbing things in general in a specific area. And then maybe when you want to differentiate, I'll just show you what I'm talking about as an example. A left drag would grab all of these. Um, if I was dragging to the right, I could grab just one thing specifically and not worry about the other items that were overlapping into my selection box. You can also hold down the left click and freeform a selection shape. Again, I dragged to the left, so I got the dashed box. I could also freeform to the right and get the solid box if I really want to be specific about something that I was trying to select. Typically, that's a waste of time. And if you really want to be specific about something, just zoom in a little bit more and then make sure you grab only that item. It's a lot faster than the freeform selection tool. On the right hand side, I've got my properties dialog box. The properties dialog tells me the properties of any item that is selected. And when nothing is selected, I can determine or predetermine properties um, for items that I'm about to create. So let me explain that a little bit more. If I were to click on this object, now the properties dialog tells me the properties of this item. It's uh, M text, it tells me what color it is, what layer it's on. Uh, the line type scale, the text height, its rotation. It's given me feedback of a lot of information. If I were to draw a line and select that, it tells me it's a polyline, gives me the length. Um, there's lots of different information that's reported back to you in the properties dialog. And if I wanted to change something, I can go ahead and change it here. And uh, you'll notice that when I escape it, it reverted back to its normal state. So when I select something and change it um, using the properties dialog, I'm only changing the properties of the item that's selected. Or if I were to select a couple of items, now you'll see it's not just one thing. If I drag this down, it's telling me what's included in my all. There's an M text item, there's a polyline, but I want to select all. And I can change the color. It's telling me right now there's nothing consistent throughout. One's red, one's white. But I can go ahead and create an override just for those two items that are selected. If I were to draw something new, again, I'm going to uh, draw a line here. It's going to use the properties that are being determined right now. However, if I were to 
preemptively say, well, nothing is selected. I want red. Now when I draw a line, that line is going to show up red instead. If you type in the word layer, that's L-A-Y-E-R, in the Layer Properties Manager, you can create layers that have predetermined properties like a color, a particular line type. And then as you create items, you can move them onto these layers um, so that they're grouped and identifiable um, under a certain layer with a certain layer name and by a certain color or identifiable by a line type and so on. You can group objects under predetermined layers. You control the look and feel of objects on that layer and their visibility by turning them on and off, by freezing them. I'm sure what you're noticing is that there are multiple places to affect the settings of objects um, or groups of objects and to control their visibility uh, or to create settings which allow groups to appear and behave differently than other groups so that you can work with um, groups of data one at a time. That's really the point is that there's not just one set of controls, there's multiple set of controls that control groups as a whole, that control items um, as individuals, um, that control the settings for items as you create them. It's a great program with lots of capabilities that allow you to work with, handle, and manipulate large sets of data in an environment that's easy to understand, visualize, and operate. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.